Welcome. In a previous video, I talked about storing video from an Amcrest camera to a Synology NAS using FTP. And I'll put a link in the description to my Amcrest playlist and my Synology playlist. And I have some videos on there related to what I'm doing in this video. And also I'll put a link to the camera I'm using. And if you use that link on Amazon, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So in this video, I'm going to be storing video from an Amcrest camera to a Synology NAS using the NAS uh, feature of the Amcrest. So if we go into our Amcrest uh, camera here, and if I go to setup, and we go to uh, storage, and then we go to destination, you'll see this where it says uh, path, and then it has FTP and NAS. So what NAS here is actually NFS, which is the network file system. It's kind of a Unix thing uh, for connecting between uh, systems. So it's similar to SMB or Apple Share or FTP, I guess. So if we go on our Synology NAS, we want to go to the control panel and we want to go to shared folder and we want to create a shared folder and I'll name this backyard cam and I'll hit next, I'll hit next again. And then on this screen here, I didn't talk about this in the last video, but I put a note up on the screen is that you can click here on enable shared folder quota and you can say put 100 gigabytes in here and then once it hits 100 gigabytes the drive will be full. Um, I'm going to leave it open for now but typically you would want to put some limit on there so you don't um, fill up your entire NAS device with video. So I'll hit next, next, or apply. Now it'll come up with permissions so I'll go to my name and I'll hit read write. Typically you would want to set up another user like a camera user and just um, give them read write permission for the cameras so they don't have access to other services on the system. I'll hit OK there. And now we have backyard cam up here. And next we want to go into file services. And you'll see we have SMB, AFP, and NFS. So if we scroll down here to NFS, we want to check enable NFS. We can check enable NFS version 4.1 support. We can click advanced settings and I have apply default Unix permissions checked. I have customized ports unchecked, and then the read packet size and the write packet size are 32 kilobytes. So once we do that, we can hit apply and apply again. And I didn't save anything because I already had this set up. If we go back to our shared folder, we can go to backyard cam and hit edit. And then we want to go to NFS permissions and want to hit create. And we want to type uh, the host name or IP, this is who has access to it. So you could just put the camera, but I'm going to put the my whole network on here. So my network is 192.168.7.0 and then I want to put forward slash and then I want to say 255.255.255.0 which is my net mask. The privilege will leave at read write and then Squash will leave to map all users to admin. Security will leave at sys. And then we'll check all three of these. So we have enable asynchronous, allow connections from non privileged ports, and allow users to access mounted subfolders. We'll hit OK there. We'll hit OK here. And that should all be set up now. So I'll minimize this. And now I can go onto my Mac. If you're on Windows, um, it's probably harder to set up NFS, but on my Mac I can actually go to connect to server and then I can load up this share. And here we have the folder up. So you can also, like if you're going you're to want to use uh, say a Mac or a PC to view these files, then you'd also want to enable SMB so you can pull that up using SMB. I'm connecting with NFS, but most of the time you just use SMB. So if we go back to the Amcrest um, site and go to storage here, then we want to go next to NAS and we want to uh, check motion detect here and we'll hit save there. Then we'll go to NAS, we'll hit enable and we'll type in our server IP address. And then here we want the remote directory. So I'll type volume one and then forward slash and then backyard cam. So this volume one is gonna be the volume you're in. 
So um, the default would be volume one. If you have a more complicated setup, this may be like volume two or three or whatever. Um, but most people will probably just have volume one there. And then we want to hit save. And then we want to go to event and click on video detection. We want to make sure this is enabled and then go to our detection area and we want to hit setup. And then we want to fill in all the boxes that where we want um, the detection to occur. If you want to exclude some areas, you can just click on these. Like if I want to exclude the neighbor's yard here, I could click on these boxes here in that corner. And uh, the save is hidden on here because I film these videos at 720p to make everything bigger on the screen, which I guess is kind of hindering me right now. So you want to do that and then you can hit save. And now motion detection should be set up. If we go over here, we're gonna see um, the backyard camera and we have a directory set up. So this here um, is like an ID, it's a default name. If we wanna change that, we can go into system in general. We can change this device to backyard cam and give it a new name. We'll hit save there, okay. I think this will change, I'm not completely sure. So now that we have this set up, I'll go trigger some motion and we should see it uh, right into this directory. Okay, so I went on the camera and I walked in front of it. So this will store this in a video. It looks like it's using this same name here. Um, I'm not sure, I did save that, right? I'm not sure, um, if you deleted this, maybe it would probably recreate it. So we have the date here, we have the 19th hour and it's seven o'clock. And if I open that, we'll see MP4. And on, my, on the newer cameras, you'll see it'll save it as MP4. On the older ones, I think it's .dav. And you can open those with VLC. MP4 is easy to open. You can open it on any system. On a Mac, you can just hit the space bar here and it will open up the video in uh, Quick Look. And see here, you see the video. I step into frame. I hit the bird feeder. And then the movement of the bird feeder will drop down uh, below the threshold of the video and it will stop recording. So you see here it's slowed down and then the video clip is stopped because the motion's more or less ended. So you'll need to go in every once in a while and clear out old videos so you don't um, hit your threshold of your storage device um, near either the whole NAS or if you use a quota, you'll, you'll want to keep it under that, say 100 gigabytes, if you set it at 100 gigabytes. So, uh, so now I've made a video on using the um, FTP and using the NAS. Which one's better? I'm not real sure. Um, you can use either one. I don't know if there's a performance difference between the two, um, but uh, I've used both and they both work well. So if you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.